Welcome to the Plant Free MD podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, check it out using my discount code ANTHONY to get 10% off which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off. Uh, Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Anthony Chafee here with uh, another episode of the Plant Free MD. And I'm very excited to say I have a a very special guest, uh, Professor Gabor Somlai, who is a Hungarian professor of molecular uh, biology and carries his PhD in the same and is uh, one of the world's experts, if not the world's expert, on deuterium, uh, which is heavy hydrogen and, and what that affects it, what what how that affects our body and in particular uh, cancer and metabolic disease, uh, Professor Somai. Thank you so much for for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. So okay. I, I'm just to clarify, I mm-hmm. have a PhD, but not, I'm not a professor. Oh, is he? Okay, are oh, you not, not okay, teaching? Yeah. yeah. So, but but yeah. you're involved in, in clinical research uh, as well. Uh, we we have yeah we have conducted a couple of clinical studies as well. But mm-hmm. my background is molecular biology. Yeah. Very good. Uh, well. <clears throat> Dr. Salmai, then, uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, so for for um, people that don't are familiar with your work, can you tell us a bit about yourself and the, and the work and the research that you do? Yeah, so I I wanted to become a biologist because it was my whole interest when I was a kid to 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 think about cancer. Mm-hmm. So that was the reason that I I went to the biology faculty. I, I graduated in, in uh, 1982, uh, but at that time I couldn't find a job relating to the cancer research. So I, I went to a so-called plant, plant protection institute and my job was to, to identify the genes of the bacteria which are responsible to, to recognize the host plant. And I, I made the PhD. I was a, a Hungarian scholarship holder of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. So when I defend, defeated my PhD, I, I worked in Germany, in Göttingen for half a year. And then I was invited to the United States uh, for a year as a postdoc. So when I came back from United States in 1989, the next day I quit my job <laughs> and <laughs> tried to find another uh, job which is related to cancer research. The, the reason that I had two, two ideas, one idea which came to my mind, it was in, in 1976, before I went to the university. And based on the, the idea which was said by Albert Sengergyi, who is one of the Hungarian Nobel laureate, and he said that the early 70s that if you want to solve the cancer problem, you have to go sub-molecular level. So he was a very, very clever scientist, and he, he recognized 50 years ago that it's nice that we are talking about molecular biology, but but he said it's impossible that the huge protein would be responsible to organize that very complex system, what we call life. And he, he suggested that the electron should be that small particle, very fast, very small, could be any, everywhere within the cell. And he, he supposed that, that the, the flow of the electron should be the reason of the cancer. So I, I kept it in my mind that the sub-molecular, that word. And one day the idea came to my mind that maybe not the negatively charged electron, but the positively charged hydrogen ion could be that very small particle. And and okay, I, I kept it in my mind. And when I was a student, just before I graduated, the other idea came to my mind that there is a heavy hydrogen. It is called deuterium. And it it's cannot be explained that I was sure that the hydrogen and the deuterium together regulate the cell growth, and that's it. So that was in, in 1980. And when I came back to the United States and I started to find a new new job, I, <clears throat> I found the Hungarian National Institute of Oncology. 
And then I started to investigate the possible role of deuterium in the living organisms. And that, that, that is how it started yeah. 32 years ago. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, that, you are MD, good. you know, so the point is that the deuterium was well known almost 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ratio between the hydrogen and deuterium is 6,600 to 1. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very strange that a small part, part of the hydrogen is, is deuterium. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess that was the reason that it was ignored for 60 years. And, and, but on the other hand, the deuterium level concentration is 12 millimole in our body. Mm -hmm. And if you compare it with the calcium level in the blood, which is 2.5 millimole, the magnesium only one millimole, how can we ignore the deuterium if, if its concentration is six times higher than the magnesium? Or, so this is how this started. Yeah, and I suppose, I mean, and, and that makes sense here because we have hydrogen just on everything, you know, it's in, in everything, yeah. you know, our hydrocarbons obviously have, have hydrogen. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you're having, you know, you know, anywhere from three to four, or sometimes two uh, hydrogen per, uh, you know, uh, carbon molecule and things like that in these, in these massive molecules. And so there's just, there's just a ton of these things and, and deuterium for people that don't know, it's just, you know, uh, hydrogen, hydrogen is the smallest atom. It's just one proton, except when you have, you know, um, deuterium, it's just basically double that. So you have to have double the weight, but it still just has that, that, uh, you know, that one positively yeah. charged, um, uh, proton. And, and so, you know, if you think about it, it's like, well, is that, is that that big of a deal? You know, you have other isotopes that have, you know, multiple, you know, weights and, and different things and, and they have, and they have different, uh, functions, you know, you have, we, they, yeah. they do different things in nature. Um, but deuterium, if, you know, if I understand it correctly, this plays more of a significant role in replacing normal hydrogen because it's, it's literally double the weight. And so you have, you know, you have that carbon 14, you know, that's, a, that's a little heavier, but it's not, it's not double the weight of, uh, of, of carbon 12 and things like that. Is that right? Yeah, you are absolutely right. So the, the point is that there are lots of isotopes in, in nature, oxygen, nitrogen, but the hydrogen is the only where there is 100% difference in, in mass. And that caused the biggest isotopic effect. So if you investigate how fast <coughs> uh, we can break a, a bond between oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, uh, uh, nitrogen, hydrogen, in that breaks uh, 10 times faster, we can break. And this is a big difference between the other isotopes that the biggest isotopic effect we can, we can measure and we can see between the hydrogen and deuterium, which is due to the 100% mass difference. Mm -hmm. and, and it means that even both of them is hydrogen with one electron, one positively charged proton, but chemically these two elements behave very, very different way. And, and that finally we have two different hydrogen. Okay, and so so to that end, you know, you know, how does deuterium act differently in our body, and, and you know, why does it matter? What, how does it influence disease and health? Yeah, so so the very first experiment, of course, I, I wanted to see whether and check it whether is there any role of deuterium in living organisms. The simplest way is if I prepare deuterium depleted water and used up that water which the concentration is much lower than, than the natural level. And in the very first in vitro study, when I checked the in vitro growth of cancer cell lines, I, I found that it slows down the cell growth and, or stopped it completely. And th that was a good sign. After that, for a year, I just repeated my experiment to be sure that this is really due to that. Uh, it, it works as I expected. The other experiment we did uh, at the Cancer Research Institute, we replaced the drinking water of the mice. So we transplanted the human breast cancer to, the, to mice, and one group of mice consumed normal water, the other deuterium depleted water, and we could save the life of the mice treated with deuterium depleted water. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that was the beginning, and this is what we published in, in 1993. And, and I, I checked, of course, what other scientists think about cancer, what they think about the signal system, and what I picked up that everybody agreed that when a growth hormone binds to the membrane and that that will stimulate the sodium hydrogen antiport. It means that the cells will pick up one sodium and uh, transfer one hydrogen uh, 
from the cell. And that caused a, a change in the pH in, within the cell. And it was said, finally, this is the signal that will stimulate and initiate the cell growth. But I, I said that the real reason is not the change in the pH, but when the pH is increasing, that hydrogen transport system prefer to eliminate the hydrogen, it means that the ratio of the deuterium is increasing in the cell. Mm -hmm. So the final signal is not the changing pH, but the increasing DH ratio. And this is what we published. This is the reason which is necessary that the cell can trigger cell division. And even we published in that paper that we checked, and I checked not only the the in vitro growth in the deuterium depleted, but deuterium enriched media, and the higher the concentration stimulated the cell growth, which means if the cell see, okay, I have uh, enough deuterium, I, I very easily can divide. And so that was one of the, the evidence that must be very strong correlation between the deconcentration and the, and the cell growth rate. So this is what we published. All right. So, so, so cells seemingly need a certain threshold of deuterium in order to, to replicate and to grow. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So I, I, I always say this is the green light for the cell to, to multiply is the increased DH ratio within the cell. And that is based on the stimulation of the membrane transport process. Okay. But on the other hand, if you want to regulate something, you need a red light also, so just like the traffic lamp. So mm -hmm. if we have only green light, that should cause a big trouble on yeah. the road. And, and, the, and the red line is, is the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And because everybody every day synthesizes so-called deuterium depleted metabolic water, because we have two sources for water. The water what we drink, and the water what we synthesize, because when we eat the food and burn it in the mitochondria, that we produce carbon dioxide and metabolic water. And that metabolic water in a healthy people, in a healthy cells is due to depleted. The, the question is how depleted, and it depends on what we eat. And so when we, when we, I ask the scientist, uh, check, the deconcentration of the sugar, the uh, cottage cheese, olive oil, or fat. So they took out the water from the food, and then they burned the food to water and carbon dioxide, and we measured the deconcentration of this water. And this is the water what we synthesize when we eat the, that type of food. And we turn out, so the carbohydrate produce 150 ppm deuterium concentration, which is the normal deconcentration. But when we burn the fat, that produce 115, 109 ppm, depending on the type of, of fat. So it means that the more fat we eat, the lower will be the metabolic water deconcentration. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that this is a big shift in the last six years in the society that people are said, you have to cover the calorie intake in 60%, 70% with carbohydrate. And it means we are producing water, metabolic water close to the 150 ppm. But 100 years ago or, or 70 years ago, people ate much more fat. So the average deconcentration of the metabolic water was lower. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I guess this is one reason that there are so many uh, diabetic patients, so much cancer patients, and the incidence is increasing mm -hmm. because our life, it, the average the level is higher than it was uh, 50, 60, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the break system is in a healthy cells, the membrane is, can increase the DH ratio, but in the healthy cells, the mitochondria producing deuterium depleted metabolic water. So these are imbalanced. But yeah. we also know that a common feature each cancer cells is that the damage mitochondria. So if no break in the system, the cells very easily can lift up the DH ratio to the threshold, and this is they are cancer cells. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Well, I think, and, and, that, and that perfectly ties into, you know, what we see in, in cancer biology is, you know, we were talking about, you know, just before we came on with, with you know, my interview with Professor Thomas Seafried from Boston College, if people, you know, have seen that or, you know, you can go back and watch. But, you know, he was saying that, you know, according to cancer biology, if you have healthy mitochondria, you cannot get cancer and that this is, yeah. cancer is really a disease of the mitochondria and mitochondria are, you know, they regulate cell growth. And when they get damaged, they can't regulate that growth. And you see it, so you get dysregulated growth, which is what cancer is. It just grows out of control. And that, that, that is what cancer is. And, um, and that the, the genetic changes are a downstream effect of this. You're creating a lot of free radicals that then damage the DNA. Um, but at, at the same time, you know, all the, all the different cancer cells in, in the tumor, uh, aren't actually of the same genes. They don't all have the same, uh, genetic changes that we would normally, we would expect to see, but they all have damaged mitochondria and they all aren't able to function properly. And that, and, and you're saying that that's, uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and, and that there's more than that, that this, this has to do with deuterium regulation as well. Is that right? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And then, you know, there is a big demand about the origin of the cancer. It's a metabolic or genetic, mm -hmm. but I, I would say that both sides is right. Because for mm -hmm. example, uh, a Herceptin is a, is a good drug to treat, for example, breast cancer. But in that case, the uh, epidermal growth factor uh, receptor is increasing due to the uh, genetic uh, background. And it means if there are more receptor for the growth hormone, it means the binding growth hormone can even stimulate the sodium hydrogen transport system. So that way they more easily can increase the DH ratio to the threshold. So I, I, I guess the, the real clue is not on the molecular level, whether it's genetic or metabolism mm -hmm. below at the submolecular level and the eat what we, the food, what we eat or, or our metabolism, how it works, our enzyme system, how can handle it finally give us a chance whether the cells can balance this increasing and decreasing DH ratio. And that is, that is, you know, healthy cells work properly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so uh, do we know how that works? Like the, is it the higher, uh, the ratio and then that triggers growth? Is there, do we know the mechanism there? Yeah. So one of our last paper we published this year in the cancer control, uh, for example, we, we, we tested uh, over 700 gene expression. It is called nanostring technology. It means we are able to count one by one the copy number of a given gene. And we tested, I guess, over 250 cancer-related genes and over 500 uh, kinase-related genes. So we kept the cancer cell line of a uh, lung cancer cell line in a deuterium depleted media 150 ppm as a control and 300 ppm as a deuterium enriched media. And, and then we, uh, the, the first results was that 70% of the gene expression changed when we changed the deconcentration. So it means changing the DH ratio immediately, simultaneously, mm -hmm. you can modify the expression of hundreds of genes. Mm -hmm. But the point was that almost 99% of the genes responded to the higher deconcentration. So, so when we are giving people deuterium depleted water, it means we keep the D level on a lower level, which uh, prevent and inhibit uh, that the cells uh, could be able to increase the gene expression. And this is how we can slow down or we can trigger the tumor necrosis. But, but the, <clears throat> the cells are prepared to, to, and waiting for that, that when the DH ratio is increasing, that turn on the genes simultaneously, hundreds of them, and then, then the proteins will, will arrange it, but they yeah. have to do it. So this is how it works, uh, and, and it's clear. Hmm. The, the other uh, important uh, result was that so I have been following cancer patients consuming DW for 30 years. I, I followed about 2,500 patients. Wow. And, it, yeah, and it, it was very strange to, to see that sometimes 
we couldn't see the positive effect of DDW. And talking, talking, asking, and, and chatting with them, after a while, it was clear that those people who are taking so much antioxidant at the same time drinking DDW, that prevent uh, the and reduce, diminish the efficacy of DDW. And I, I suppose the DDW must increase the radicals. And if we increase the radicals in cancer cells, that can trigger the necrosis of the tumor cells. And finally, that was proved by Professor Zubarev in, at the Karolinska Institute that really DDW cause a disbalance and, and finally cause uh, an oxidative stress. And that leads to the necrosis of the tumor. So that should be the, the basic mechanism how we can kill cancer with deuterium depleted water. Okay. So that, that, then when the deuterium gets down to a, to a certain threshold, uh, then the, the, the cell just can't, can't survive. It, it's just creating too many free radicals and then it, and it ends up uh, destroying itself. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, right. And a little bit more complicated. So, mm -hmm. uh, can I cite my book? Yeah, please that do. I, I probably, yeah, shall I? So this is, this is my book. Okay. So, so I, I, I summarized the 30 years of the study. The, the, we have to focus two aims. We have to reduce the deconcentration to trigger the necrosis. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep it that decreasing, gradually decreasing D level as soon as possible. And this is a big game. So typically for cancer patients, we recommend to start with 105 ppm, but after one, two months, no real change in the body because we will be in an equilibrium. So after we suggest to change for 85 ppm and after one, two months, change for 65 ppm. And if the protocol is, is good and the dosage is, is good, that way we gradually reducing the D level for months by months and slowly we can eliminate all cancer cells and that would be the way to 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 use it and apply it and of course everybody should follow the protocol which is recommended by the oncologist mm -hmm. so i do not say replace it no we have to integrate due to depletion to to the existing therapy yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, so, you know, it sounds like there's like, you know, cells have obviously like a higher threshold and, you know, this will, this will cause harm and, and dysregulated growth and then too low, the cells aren't going to be able to survive. And so, it, it, and I would, I would presume that that's true for other cells as well. So you don't want to, but, but at the same time, you're, you know, from what you were saying, it, you, it can, you know, healthy cells can, can regulate that a little better. Is that right? But, but you yeah. still don't want them to get too low. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, you are right. Yeah, uh, so 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 far, after selling about five million liter water, <laughs> we, we we haven't received any any feedback that it would be harmful for mm -hmm. for the healthy people, and of course before that we made the mice study, we had made the dogs and cats study, followed the blood counts and all the thing. So no real uh, uh, concern about the safety concern. And of course, I can imagine that maybe one ppm, two liter per day, and a very fast uh, decrease should cause trouble. Mm -hmm. The lowest water we used, it was 25 ppm. And of course, we never recommend either healthy or cancer patients to start at 25 ppm, because first, uh, no any reason to, to trigger so fast and, and uh, so dramatic decrease in the concentration. And, and, and even it is not recommended to do that. Mm -hmm. And if we can go to the metabolism, so we had checked, uh, we, one, one, one day a cancer patient who was diagnosed with diabetes came back and he said that his blood sugar level went down. And, and I was very surprised because I, I wanted to solve the cancer problem, not the uh, metabolic disease. So when we, we run a rat study at the university, we tested different deconcentration, uh, 25, 75, 105, 125 ppm, and, and checking the blood glucose level. And the point was that not the lowest deconcentration reduced the best way the blood glucose level, but the 125 ppm. Hmm. 
And then we checked between 125 and 150, changing 5 ppm. So the best dose is 125, 135, 140 ppm. And it means that the, the life and the, all the system, regulatory system is, is plus minus 20, 30 ppm. This is the range when the proteins and all the system is sensitive for the changing the concentration. So when we are talking about metabolic disease, we do not recommend to go down to 65 or 45 ppm. Mm. Just recommend to keep it at 130, 135 ppm, and then the insulin signal system will be much better and, and, and all the parameters relating to metabolic disease uh, work much on, on the better way. Okay. And, and so how does, how does deuterium affect the, the blood sugar levels? Do we know how that works? We, we have completed one phase two clinical study. We, we enrolled 30 patients. They were impaired fasting glucose and diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance test. And in that study, we could prove that the uh, blood pressure decreased. And in that study, we could prove that the fasting glucose level decreased. And uh, within three months, 30% uh, of the patients, we could reduce the insulin resistance. So, and, and as I started my talk or, or you, answering your question, before the, that clinical study, we measured the deconcentration of the blood. Mm -hmm. And it was 100 45, 150 ppm between that. Okay, after 90 days, we measured 133 ppm. So we reduced the D level where we think the optimum, 135, 133 ppm. And in that deconcentration, everything was better. The, the cells enjoyed it that, uh, that the D level is reduced. Yeah. And, and that this is belongs to the, I guess, to the the ketogenic diet and uh, high car carbohydrate intake. And uh, the, this is, we can say that the ketogenic diet is very, very good and recommended because mm. it is due to depletion itself. Mm. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, yeah, I, I, I wonder, like, well, I mean, it's obviously everything's all tied together. And when you have, and we have, you know, systems in biology that just work so much better in one direction, and we can find a lot of reasons for that. And it, and it certainly sounds like this is, is another one of those, uh, you know, just thinking about that as you know, obviously I, you know, uh, I'm a big proponent of, of a carnivore diet. So, uh, and it, an even more aggressive, uh, keto, di keto diet, but, um, you know, but just thinking about, you know, deuterium. Um, you know, like you're saying, you know, you're, you're eating a lot of, uh, when you eat carbohydrates, your deuterium levels are going up when you eat a lot of, uh, animal fats, you're, you're making metabolic water and that's deuterium deplete. So that's, yeah. that's offsetting that and helping that. Um, and then do you do things like fruits and vegetables and those sorts of things, do they have higher deuterium as well. It, would that be contributing or is that, um, where do they lie? So, uh, depending on the food, there are two main factors. The one factor is the origin of the of the food, because in the equatorial area, the the rain deuterium concentration is 155 ppm, mm. and as we go to the uh, poles, to the north and the south poles, the deconcentration of the uh, surface water is decreasing. Mm. So the banana and orange has a higher D level comparing with the apple in Hungary, growing in Hungary. This is one thing. The other, the plants has three pathway to fix the carbon dioxide from the air and synthesize carbohydrates. It is a so-called C3, uh, C4 and, and CAM. And the C3, which for example, the wheat, uh, the spinach, they deplete more the deuterium than the C4, which is, for example, the corn. Mm. So it means plants are plants, but depending on the uh, pathway, what way they can fix the carbon dioxide, even can be closer the deconcentration to 150 or can be more depleted. Mm. The CEM, for example, the pineapple, it's even can enrich the deuterium because the CEM uh, pathway can can accumulate the deuterium. So it means that 
independently, so the plants are also can discriminate uh, to some extent between the hydrogen and deuterium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and so going to to back just to, to the mitochondria just quickly, just on that. So how does how does the deuterium affect you know the the energy metabolism of of the mitochondria? Yeah. So. So what we again? What? How can we prove it that mm -hmm. we can we can uh, in, has impact with the deuterium level on the mitochondria? Because it is said that uh, that uh, the mitochondria of course is running and and turning the ATPase and and uh, binding a double bind uh, double uh, mass mass deuterium can destroy, or that should be one way. But mm -hmm. what we have done is a test with the uh, athletes. So uh, we made a loading test and we checked the blood parameters uh, uh, at the beginning of the trial. And then we repeated 44 days later when the, they consumed deuterium depleted water. And we, what we found was that, that uh, the lactic acid appeared much later after consuming DDW, which means the mitochondria should work much properly in a lower D concentration, no lack of the oxygen, and they could utilize much better the, the blood glucose level. And that was what we found. The anion gap was much smaller after consuming for 44 days the DDW. And that suggests that at the lower level, the mitochondria works on a much proper way. And mm. this is the reason it, that should be related to the uh, mitochondria, to the ATPase, and to that whole whole part of the metabolism. Yeah, which is very funny. You know, I mean, we, we think about obviously, you know, the sub the sub molecular level. We're just talking about these, these tiny little molecules, and they're just sort of maybe throwing the weight off. Like you think like an airplane, and you just sort of don't balance it right. It's just going to sort of fly a bit funny. And I guess you know, in in a crude way, you could you could think of think of it like that with these molecules, but. It's it's funny how that that you know causes such a massive effect on our on our metabolism and energy and cancer as well. It's um, it's quite impressive. So I, I would say if if uh, at the Big Bang uh, mm -hmm. only hydrogen would be in the universe, then wouldn't be the the living organ is so complicated. Mm -hmm. So the reason that we should became so complex and the eukaryotic cells. Uh, can exist and and so complex system can occur just because that the the nature could use out that there is heavy hydrogen and for that they could build up a new regulatory system so i, I always say that people should think about that <clears throat> each of our cells has a nucleus which uh, 10 micrometer and that 10 micrometer contains the dna which is 1.8 meter length mm -hmm. so packaged in the nucleus and, and with uh, 25,000 genes and it works properly. And it's yeah. impossible that huge proteins should be able to regulate that, uh, which genes should be expressed, which genes should be suppressed. And, and that some molecular level should be a way to, to, to be able to organize uh, that whole metabolism, the gene expression and all this thing. Yeah. Which is crazy, but I mean, but it's, but it's great. You know, it just adds another layer of complexity to all of this, and um, and this is this is very complex. So it may, it, it uh, stands to reason that it's even more complex and complicated than we than we imagine. Because what we know it is, you know, like we have I have a degree in molecular and cellular biology, and we don't we don't know how everything works. We we can explain a lot of things. We know about all these different molecules and how many Daltons they are and how, you know, the different sort of, you know, expressions and all these sorts of things. But at the same time, we, we, we still can't explain everything that we see in, in our lives, you know? Yeah. And then of course, big difficulty is to, to cope with the world that yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. how we should move because it, it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult. And this is what uh, Thomas Seifert had said that mm. he is keep saying that the mitochondria are all and then metabolic disease and all this thing. And, and he's also, are not able to to accept how is it possible that that all the business the pharma industry do not move to that direction that mm -hmm. we have to solve the cancer problem is clear because the incidence increasing the price is increasing the society 
will not be able to to cover the cost mm -hmm. of this and even that the patient die 50 percent 60 70 percent depending on the cancer type yeah and we keep saying so this is the only way we can do we we are publishing and and uh, providing more and more evidence and one day we hope that yeah that yeah. The, the right people recognize it that we should go into that direction yeah um and so i i saw a couple things we were talking about um previously you know obviously you know th that uh you know certain cancers didn't work as well with uh, deuterium depletion and they just sort of responded a bit differently which makes makes sense you know they're they're you know, different actors um is that is that the case i think you mentioned pancreatic cancer melanoma and uh gbm as well is that right yeah we, we say that they respond but these for these cancer type we, rec we recommend a different dosage okay so they are very very aggressive aggressive type of cancer mm -hmm. and uh, and and so this is the reason we we recommend much faster decrease in the deconcentration we recommend start immediately with 85 ppm mm -hmm. and we do not wait for two three months changing for the other one uh, we have data for 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 gly glioblastoma and typically the median survival time for glioblastoma uh, is about 15 months in our data it's it's uh, 45 months so integrating it we can get a threefold increase wow. for 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 lung cancer we have a 48 months median survival time which is a sixfold increase in in median survival time but it is clear that the pancreatic cancer melanoma and glioblastoma they are the most aggressive and 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 yes we have to mm. apply all kind of technique and yeah. and and therapy which is which is available Mm, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, and and you know, glioblastoma is, is a is a nasty, nasty disease. It's you know, it's the most common you know primary brain tumor. Unfortunately, it's it's also the most aggressive, and so yeah. you know, we deal with that a lot in neurosurgery. And uh, you know, for people that don't don't know, you know, the the median survival of someone who who forgoes treatment uh, for GBM uh, it's three months. You know, so yeah, it makes sense yeah. that you have to sort of do a more rapid uh, protocol uh, for these guys because it is just so aggressive. And you know, when you know, cancer kills in a lot of ways. One of the major ways is they just disrupt the organs that they're growing in, and you get organ failure. And if you're doing that in your brain, you don't have too, too much room uh, for for error. Yeah. So, you know, when that's that's growing aggressively, you need to you need to stop it down quite quickly. Um, that's very impressive that, that, that you're getting, you know, 42 weeks out of, um, out of that, that, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. And that's just with the, with the deuterium depleted months. water. 42 protocol. months, 42 no, for, months, 45 yeah, yeah, months, yeah, yeah, 45 yeah. months. Yeah. 45 yeah, months. And, and, yeah. And depends on when they can enjoy, of course, our, uh, followed population is, is, is very different because mm -hmm. this is not a prospective study that, okay, I will enroll that type of patient, but when the people with G, uh, GBM, we can uh, use the DW at the beginning. It means mm -hmm. after or before surgery and together with radiotherapy, then the median survival time can be even higher. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good combination, the radiotherapy combining with the deuterium depletion, deuterium depletion mm -hmm. because both is generating radicals. And, mm -hmm. and that way we can even increase the radical concentration and we have a a more power to to trigger the necrosis of the tumor yeah okay and this is the reason that we need clinical trials we have to uh, carry out lots of protocols and clinical trials to figure out the best way of the dosage and the best way of the integration of dw to the existing therapy yeah absolutely um and so have you noticed it in, in other sort of chronic disease? So you have, you have sort of metabolic uh, syndrome, obviously cancer is a major one. And I think you said uh, high blood pressure as well. Are there any other uh, health um, you know, issues that, that we see um, being related to deuterium? We, we published with the... With, uh, with, uh relating a paper relating to the anti-aging we tested uh, the center of elegance in a system and we could find that we extended the lifetime lifespan of the uh, that small germs and we also could prove that for example the 
uh, superoxide dismetals expression increased when we used applied the DW, and which again proved that DW trigger radicals and and the cells are responding. But independently from me, it was proved that the long time memory of the rats was uh, improved using DW. Other proof correlation between the deconcentration and, and depression. And uh, even now we are, we want uh, some fund from the European Union in a consortium in, in Europe that we were checking uh, the neural system. And uh, we, we've got a fund about 76,000 euros. So we will move forward. And then uh, we had sometimes I had some sporadic and, and feedback from the patients. I, I, I even wouldn't like to talk about because so it, it's so, so unbelievable that so think about when I started and I said, OK, we can cure cancer with water. So how, how can I generate fund and how can I move forward? with that statement that water can be good to, to cure or to treat cancer. And, and nobody, of course, wanted to support that type mm -hmm. of research. So this is the reason we established the company and we started to generate some revenue and that revenue was covering the, all the expenses as, and, and drug development. But so I, I guess it's more than enough for me if I talk about we should go to the cancer drug development yes. and and the metabolic disease mm -hmm. and and but but the point is the D, ddw is not a cancer drug we right. just recognized the key mechanism that submolecular regulatory mechanism and if we adjust everything which is natural it means not 150 ppm is the natural level we have to reduce it then all the cells will be happy and we will we will be healthy yeah well, good. How, how do people, t is, it, is it possible to test, uh, you know, how much deuterium they have in their body and then see if that's at a healthy level or not? Uh, we, we have measured hundreds of people, uh, deconcentration. Uh, the simplest way is to, to condense it, the exhaled uh, 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 water. Mm -hmm. And we can measure it, which reflect the deconcentration of the human body. The, to measuring in the in the blood, it's more complicated. We need a mass spectrometer on the thing, but we we can measure it by by a by a laser equipment what we have in in, in our production system. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, we can say that as we measure measure it, people living 145, 150 ppm. Those who are on a ketogenic diet, it must be lower. Mm -hmm. And uh, those who are consuming, we we, we giving back uh, samples from those who are drinking the W. But we have made the kinetic that, of course, the longer they drink, the lower the D level, the lower will be the deconcentration of the of the body. So it's 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 not, nothing surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the way we can, we can measure the deconcentration of the water. Mm -hmm. And if it's coming from the exhaled uh, air and it's precipitated, uh, we can measure it. And so, and what's a good range, uh, like a good healthful range that people uh, would, would want to be in? I, I guess changing with, with 10, 15 PPM, that's, that can be much better. That this is my, it's, it's good for people. Yeah. So from 135, 130, 140, even a couple of PPM degrees, mm -hmm. it has an impact on it. Okay. And so would, um, what, what, if you wanted your, your PPM at, at this level, what would your level be that you would want to shoot for personally? I typically consume uh, our product prevent a 105 PPM. Mm -hmm. I, I not every day, but in the morning and at the evening or afternoon, I drink, let's say about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 liter per day. Mm -hmm. the, the rest of the water is normal water. Uh, it means the average about 125 PPM, what I drink every day. Mm -hmm. And when I measured, it was 
about 160, 130 ppm, my, mm -hmm. my D concentration. Uh, I, I play basketball. No one can run so much than, than I can run. So, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's extremely good. I can, I can recommend to everybody. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I guess that that should be the target, uh, 130, 140 ppm within that mm -hmm. ppm. Okay. And then, do you do you, what do you do? You follow a ketogenic diet, or um, moved into the, the more carnivore sort of range, or what do you what do you do yourself? For 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 I don't know how many years I I when I remember when I was a kid, we ate lots of bread. Mm -hmm. And and that was typical, and that was sad, uh, eating too much bread. And uh, several years ago, I, I changed radically the calorie intake. So only one slide of bread and so much uh, I, I fat with a high uh, uh, meat with a high fat uh, concentration or or oil oil or yes, I, I drastically changed the the calorie intake and increased the the portion of the fat. Uh, I, I I always say to to cancer patients, try to find the balance between the fat and carbohydrate. So I never say don't eat any carbohydrate. Most of the people cannot uh, uh, keep it on a long term, but they they I recommend always increase the calorie intake with fats. That will help you, and the people hopefully try to find the best ratio between carbohydrate and and fat and no any sugar of course yeah yeah all right great um and then i think there's something like so we're, we're talking about animal fats um about you know specifically but what about like seed oil and vegetable oils and these sorts of things does that does that change or is it just fat works the same uh to make uh you know in this in this uh system to make yeah. deuterium depleted water as well or is it is there a difference so olive oil has a much lower d concentration yeah so mm -hmm. then then the carbohydrate part of the of the mm -hmm. plant and mm -hmm. so in each chemical process always the hydrogen is prepared is, is preferred mm -hmm. it means that synthesizing a long chain of uh, of uh, uh, fat molecules it takes lots of chemical step and at each time the hydrogen will be preferred. So finally, the deconcentration is getting lower and lower. So any kind of complex molecules uh, has a very low deconcentration. And in that case, even the plant uh, oils uh, has, a, has a lower deconcentration. So it is recommended, of course, to not eating only animal fat, but coming from Hmm. from uh from fat uh from from plant so the other ones are okay too i think I, I saw one thing we were talking about there might be there might be a difference um uh with with like the seed oils and things like that it, with um uh like the red pill revolution guys um uh with uh with them you were, you were there was something they were they were talking about how uh like the seed oils might cause a problem uh, with the mitochondria and with uh, those like processes, like just just how they were metabolized in our in our cells. I I couldn't uh, comment yeah. that that why yeah. why would so so for I I remember that once I uh, invited a professor from France, mm -hmm. and then who could measure the the deconcentration on a on a 18 carbon uh, chain and he could prove that for example the carbon 9 has only uh, 60 ppm deuterium and carbon 13 uh, and next to them and, and left and right it was 130 so uh, this during the biochemical process it is so so sophisticated and so precise that even depending on the number of the carbon in a long change, the D level can be different. Mm -hmm. And in that way, how can that influence the mitochondria and how can uh, modify it? I, I, I cannot mm -hmm. say that. I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know that. 
Okay. All right. And then, so what, what is the, the general protocol that you would have, or, you know, when you work with these cancer patients that you put them on, um, to, you know, to deplete it down? Is it, is it every day that they're doing this or is it, do they do it in cycles or, or what's the best uh, way to go about it? So one, one, one reason that I, I wrote the book, the team depletion to, to share the knowledge, what I collected, because I, I guess no one on the ver world, uh, f followed over 2000 patients over 32 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to call like that because that way we have over a 10,000 cumulative follow up time. So, so oh. I, I has huge uh, database and I, I try to give an advice depending on the cancer type, depending on the staging, depending on the conventional therapy. And I wrote several protocol, uh, depending on what is a cancer type at which stage and uh, whether the patient uh, is waiting for the operation, the patients receiving hormone therapy, the patients has receiving uh, chemotherapy or whatever. So everything is put into the book, mm -hmm. but the basic concept is someone start to consume DDW, they have to replace all the daily water intake because the cells recognize immediately when they drinking beer or wine or, or milk or whatever, and they increase back the D level. That is very good for the cancer cells, but slowly they can adapt to the uh, lower D level. So they have to consume 1.52 liter of waters per day. This is one thing we recommend. And, and depending on the staging, uh, it, and depending on the type of cancer, they can start at 105 mm -hmm. after one, two months, change for 85, but later change to 65. But for example, some one, one, somebody receiving a chem chemotherapy and it lasts for three, four months, I suggest just keep the same, same D concentration. So we, we save the potential of DDW by the time when they finish the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. and then they finish the chemotherapy, but the treatment will be continue, changing the deconcentration, and that way we can even cause additional regression, or we can keep the patient in 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 remission. Uh, so it is getting so complex when when I try to figure out all, all the aspect of the, of the cancer therapy, mm -hmm. and I and I do hope that so that require a strong education of the oncology society. And I do hope that maybe some of them will read the book mm -hmm. and then try to pick up uh, what they can use up in, in their daily, daily work. Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, that's, that's, um, I guess that, that's one of the problems is that, you know, in, in medicine these days, they just, they're, you know, we're very fixated, like, this is how you treat cancer. This is how you treat diabetes. This is how you treat all these different sorts of things and everyone's is it very in inside the box thinking unfortunately mm -hmm. so it's just going to take a lot of yeah a lot of uh it's going to take a crowbar i think to say open these things up yeah, yeah. i am definitely out of the books yeah, yeah. box out of the box yeah yeah so, but uh, yeah and and the other of course i i know that without the pharma industry we cannot proceed mm -hmm. so without uh, completing phase two clinical trial without uh, being funding with a $10 million, we cannot proceed. We have collected so much data mm -hmm. and so many scientists enjoy to enjoy to, to do research with, with deuterium. Uh, the science has done what they had to done. And, 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 and the, the business, the pharma industry should be involved to, to proceed. And, and I hope one day they can recognize it. Yeah. Is it, is there any, any, any hope to, to try to get someone to pick this up for, you know, large scale, you know, clinical trials for a pharmaceutical company? Every day for 30 days. Yeah. yeah. For, so for 30 years. Yeah. Every yeah, day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep, I, I took part, I take part on a big uh, pharma meetings. Mm -hmm. I, I request a, a meeting and then I talk to them and I try to challenging the investors, uh, uh, Right now, we are waiting for the response yeah. uh, for that. But what we see that, so 30 years ago, it was an idea. 
Uh, later, we had a couple of paper published. Today, we have a cancer drug for veterinary use. Uh, we are using an injection formulation and testing for for breast cancer dogs. We have completed clinical trials, and always they need a little bit more. Right. So <laughs> even we have so much data, yeah. we have approached so far from the beginning. They they always ask, okay, we we would like to see some more. And this is it's very difficult to, yeah. to accomplish. I think that's the thing too, is just like you know, when is when is it enough? You know, you have you have all this data, you know, then it's like I think that it's certainly a proof of concept to to you know initiate a larger trial, you know, and and you know, it's not like you know, like like uh Professor Seafried uh gets frustrated because like you know, there's no money in telling people to not eat carbs, you know, and that's and that's sort of what he's trying to say. So he, 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 there's there's not that, you know, financial incentive behind it, but, but this has, this has something behind it, you know, it's like they can make deuterium depleted water and put this out in a big, uh, you know, in, in a large, in, you know, um, worldwide fashion. And that, and so that's something that they can sell. So there's, you know, there's a return on their investment for, you know, spending millions of dollars on clinical trials. You would think that they might, might be interested in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this is what I recognized 30 years ago that no one will support me and and funding, and this is how our company HYD is struggling and and uh, generating some revenue and investing all the money back to the research and clinical trials. But at that stage, of course, we are waiting for for investors. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 not easy, but we yeah. keep doing. And then, and then, like you know, government grants and things like that. Have you been able to, like, you know, from like the different cancer societies and things like that? Have they been interested in this line of research? So, yeah, you you should you you. you we believe that that should happen. No, yeah, that would. We are just yeah. applying at the European Union for for a couple yeah. of million euros, mm -hmm. uh, and. No, it's it's hard to understand yeah. why 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 we are doing that and why is it so hard? But I, I do you, do you know the story of the Helicobacter? Australian scientists said that there is a connection yeah. between the research. It took twelve years, yeah. And they were scientists, they were MDs, yeah. and they presented the data. And one day somebody said, okay, there is connection between the research yeah. and and the presence of Helicobacter, and mm -hmm. this is how it works. Yeah, we have yeah. to reach the critical mass, and if you reach it within one day, that will be accepted. Yeah, it was it was funny too. Yeah, I I do know the Helicobacter uh, story. Actually, a hospital that I work at, um, he was he was actually there at Royal Perth Hospital, and um, so I do I do we cover trauma surgery. That's the major trauma hospital there, and so um. I saw actually a poster sort of with him talking about that. I was like, oh, you know, he's from here. Uh, but yeah, I always, I always loved that story because, you know, everyone was saying, no, 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 you got it all wrong, all these sorts of things. It can't possibly be. And he said, all right, screw it. And he just drank like a bottle of this stuff. Yeah, itself. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, and gave I himself a bunch of, because he was, he was uh, for people that don't know, he was proposing that um, ulcers were actually caused by an infection, Helicobacter pylori infection, and everyone else was saying, "No, no, no, it's stress and things like that." And they were they were yeah. doing bigotomies yeah. and cutting the vagus nerve and to to not uh, secrete so much acid. Yeah. And and he's just like, "Nope." Uh, and uh, and he just drank this stuff, gave himself an infection, and got ulcers. And they went, "All right, fair enough." <laughs> yeah, but within two weeks he was cured. Cured. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then cured yeah. with his protocol, and then you know treated with antibiotics, yeah. and and that was it. And the ulcers went away. Yeah, that was a great yeah. story. Yeah, it's it, so when when we change, we are going to change the paradigm. It takes lots of time. Yeah, and I I had to accept it, and yeah, that's it. How it works. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, and it, and it does just take time. And, and and you're right, you know, like, you know, we're on, we're outside of the box. So people in the box are, are scared to leave the box. And, uh, and that's fine. And we're, and we're saying things that are new, and that are different. And so, you know, it, you know, it does, uh, you know, the burden of proof does fall on us. And that's just, that's just something we have to, to deal with, which is fine. You know, that's, that's our job. Um, and uh, so I was going to ask you, so what, what are some ways that people can just people at home, 
what can they do to sort of deplete deuterium? We, I guess, you know, going on a ketogenic diet, increasing your, your fats versus carbohydrates is one, obviously drinking deuterium depleted water, but is there, are there other things uh, that people can just do in their daily lives? Uh, so there are, I, I saw on the YouTube or different channels, uh, giving advice, how people can uh, prepare deuterium depleted water. It doesn't work. Okay. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> People can do it and believe it that it's it's deuterium depleted. No. So uh, the process is called fractional distillation. How we can can produce it, and there is only 1.5 Celsius degrees difference between the boiling points of D2 and H2O. Mm. Uh, so, if someone took let's say 10 liter of water and start to boil it, and collect the first one liter of water, they can reduce it one ppm. Uh, if they start to boil it the one liter, they can take one deciliter and that will contains 148 ppm and that's it. So no way. Our facility is about 12 meter high or 30 meter high and we 100 times precipitate, eliminate, precipitate, eliminate the steam. And at the end, we can reduce 200 uh, to 25 ppm or 30 ppm. So this is the way. The other, this uh, freezing the water, I, I saw that and I, I, I checked it and I do it according to the mm -hmm. uh, protocol he, he recommended. And, and of course I could measure it and one two ppm people can can reduce it and even somebody published it in the paper that this is not the way to produce so they i recommend the people change the diet mm -hmm. increase the fat and oil and all this intake reduce the carbohydrate intake reduce drastically the sugar intake and 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 drink a couple of uh, uh deuterium depleted water so for healthy people I, I, re I recommend uh, two protocols. Uh, reduce with 10, 15 ppm. It means half liter a day due to depleted water and the rest could be normal water. And this is to optimize the metabolism of the cells. And if you want to reduce the, the incidence of the cancer, we recommend to, to consume exclusively DW for three, four months every year every second year, every third year, depending on, on the risk factor. So the older population over 50, 60 years, we, I would recommend every year, every second year. For the younger population, every th three, third year, you can uh, taking DDW for three, four months, 105 ppm or 125 ppm. That should be cause a increase that should trigger the radicals in the small group of cells and that maybe should eliminate those cells which maybe four or five years later would be recognized as a cancer. Okay, so that, that so that's the idea is that you, you deplete the deuterium and normal healthy cells aren't going to be affected by this, but the cells that aren't really working too well, the mitochondria are a bit, a bit gummed up they're not going to be able to handle the, the, the lower levels of deuterium. Yep. They're not going to be able to bolster up their level. And so they'll apoptose. Is that right? Yeah. And yeah. so, you, yeah, so you're really just, yeah. So you're really just cleaning house on damaged sort of yeah. aberrant cells that you don't want anyway. Yeah. We are, we are, we are challenging all the cells when we reduce the D level. The yeah. healthy cells handle it. The bad cells, old guy, bad guys cannot handle it. And yeah. that, that is how we can targeting the cancer cells. Yeah, that's a, that's sort of the same same idea that people you know go through ketosis or even go through yeah. fasting in order to you know trigger uh, you know the, the the autophagy and and you know having your your body suck up these these little cells. Is that is that is that is is the fasting the same system? Is, so so is is fasting uh, a part of that sort of deuterium depletion? Is that sort of how that that plays in? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, all the all the piece of the cell should adjust everything to the change in D concentration, mm -hmm. and this is a big challenge. And and this is what the healthy cells can 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 regulate and and handle on an adequate way. But of course, the healthy the cancer cells 
very hard working on to to be able to handle this this changing deconcentration and this is very important what is the dose for the different uh, different type of the cancer so but there is a big difference in the adaptation ability of the healthy cells and cancer cells and this is what we have to use out and all the other ketogenic diet fasting finally it's required from the cells to react for that type of changes and and that way we can help the healthy cells and yeah. select the bad one okay great and is I don't, I don't know you may not have um, any data on this but is there is there a difference in deuterium depletion from just eating a ketogenic diet versus actually just fasting as well or is it sort of the same just just from that that, that fat metabolism uh, side of things uh we are just waiting for a paper to be to be accepted mm -hmm. in that case we we made deuterium depleted uh, x and from that x we used the yolk mm -hmm. and we gave it to the mice study and and that food which was artificially depleted mm -hmm. uh, have the can, uh, have the mice to fight against the cancer so the the food independently i guess what is the origin of the of the mm. organism yeah. so sorry we just just lost um yeah, just, I, I, I I didn't didn't yeah so you just got to the part where we were talking about the the mice eating the yolks uh the deuterium depleted that yolks. which was deuterium depleted and it has an impact on 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 the tumor growth mm -hmm. i i guess but it is also important that the mass we can eat with food is is much smaller than drinking the water and it's it's clear that the we cannot ignore the water just because the volume what we are taking every day and 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 finally the combination i guess it's it's a key issue Okay. And so would then, I mean, just obviously that, I guess that's an argument for, you know, dry fasting, you know, you just, you know, some of these guys that don't drink any water and don't eat any food, obviously you can't do that forever. Is that, is, do you think that that would, that would do any, I mean, I don't, I don't fast myself and I don't, I don't recommend it for people generally, but it's just sort of trying to think of mechanisms here. You know, if you're, if you're taking in food and water and this contains a certain amount of deuterium, if you are just abstaining from that for a certain number of days and you're just and you're now you're just running on your fat stores and you're making metabolic water uh, in the in the mitochondria, exactly. which is you know deuterium depleted, um, is that going to sort of heighten that response? Is that going to speed up that deuterium depletion at all? Do you, do you think that would I, I, I don't know uh, what is the best volume to reduce the the, the water intake? But I, I'm sure I do not recommend to take so much water. So I do not agree when the people say, okay, I drink uh, three, four liter per day, because mm. the two sources of water, the water that we drink and the water that we synthesize, it means if somebody drink uh, three, four liter normal water, then they increase the average D level because they are so much water with 150 ppm uh, yeah. combining with the 0.3 liter metabolic water. So I would yeah. recommend 1.5 liter combining with the water, the metabolic mm -hmm. water that give an average. If we double the water intake, that will increase the average D level. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know how can we reduce the water intake. I, I never recommend not drinking uh, no. water or drinking only a couple of deciliters. I, I do not recommend it because I don't know where, it, where is the optimum for that. Yeah. But the fasting, of course, we are utilizing the, the fats after a mm -hmm. while. And of course, that produced from 100 uh, fat, we synthesize over 100, uh, 108 grams of water. But, but we we do not we use up uh, one kilogram fats to synthesize 1.1 liter water. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, well, that's immensely for me. I, I like drinking a lot of water. I always feel good drinking a lot of water. So I'm one of those guys that drinks like a gallon or two gallons a day, especially when I'm working. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> uh, if it's not yeah. the, the, the lobby way, do, do not recommend. Yeah, you know, I have to think about that. Like, you know, but, but that's the thing. I mean, even, even just in athletics, I've, I've, you know, whenever I drank more water, I did just feel better for my athletic performance. I had more energy. I had more, uh, you know, I, yeah, sure. And, and these sorts of um, things helped, you know, it, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you have to, have to sort of take everything in into consideration. And certainly when you're, you know, it, especially if you're in, in, in a metabolic man, healthy or, uh, you know, facing cancer, that's certainly something to, uh, you know, very much keep in mind is that, uh, is that, is that ratio um, as well. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, very good. Um, so, so you have your book, um, and you can hold that hold that up for people. That's a sort of deuterium depletion that, that just goes through uh, the protocols. And uh, if people are interested in getting that, obviously that that has everything that we've touched on here, but obviously in, in great, much greater detail, and we'll give much more specifics uh, so people uh, can check that out. And um, and and you make deuterium depleted water yourself, is that? And that's and that's available for sale uh, for people if they wanted to get that. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Even we have we have distributor in in Australia who we selling our Preventa oh, yeah. water. We have distributor China, United States, and then hopefully more and more people mm-hmm. producing and 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 using the yeah. product. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, this is this is something that I've that I've heard um, about in in the periphery, but it wasn't something that I'd ever really uh, been able to to define much information on. And so it was, it was very interesting uh, to speak with you today. And that's, uh, it's fascinating uh, stuff. And, and, uh, and just very, very interesting, like how, how much of a, of a direct effect that just changing the concentrations of uh, deuterium hydrogen in our bodies, that, that this just, this just changes so many processes yeah. in our body. I think that's just absolutely fascinating. So thank you very much for, for coming on and explaining that to us. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's a great help for me and for I guess everybody if they hear about that story. Yeah, no, definitely. And and where can people find you? Find your work uh, and your uh, and and your water in your book. You, yeah, uh, you can go to the ResearchGate site. All the papers which has been published, or to the hyd.au. It's a company website. We published all the data, and it is very important to to share the knowledge with other yeah. people. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And um, we'll put the um, link to your, to your, uh, uh, you know, the term water and everything like that as well. And and any other, other uh, links to your, uh, to your work. So great. Uh, Dr. Somlai, thank you so much uh, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.